I know time signatures and meter are topics I've covered enough so far and I've ignored videos I disagree with and I feel like my response would just be not all that entertaining and I'd be repeating myself. However, this recent video by Cadence Hero is different. Cadence's video, link in the description of course, it's actually really well done and is so close on many aspects. So let's praise some awesome explanations and discuss a few others. Firstly, for a video like this, we need to explain what a time signature is. We could go with mine, that I still have no idea why I didn't redo this. Well, a time signature is a way of structuring the notes into what should be the most logical way to organize the music to make it easiest to read. Or we can go with cadences. Time signatures are essentially a way of notating how we feel the division of music. The top number indicates how many beats we have per measure. If the top number is four, for instance, we can count loops of four and it will feel natural and align with the beat. Her definition here is disproven by her own video. Something like 12-8, for instance, we would usually also feel in four but with a triplet subdivision. The definition we need to stick with, or at least in my opinion until I hear something better, is that the top number tells you how many of the bottom are in each measure. That's it. The time signature doesn't tell you anything about the meter, but this top number gets the beat idea suggests that it does, which is just wrong. Here's how I like to think about time signatures. We feel the number of beats per measure, and we feel the subdivision. That's it. There's a lot of rules for the nomenclature of time signatures, but I think those rules are not very intuitive. Outdated. Say it again. Those rules are not very intuitive. Outdated. I agree that simple, compound, and complex or irregular need to go. Yes, yeah, simple is a duple feeling and compound is a triple feeling, but I don't know any real use of these after basic music theory, if even that. Especially when we have music that shifts between the two. The difference between something like 6-4 and 6-8. It's the same number of beats per measure, just the type of note changes. It usually just comes down to tempo. Generally, the faster the tempo gets, the shorter the note value per beat. So slower songs in 6 would perhaps be written in 6-4, while faster tunes would perhaps be written in 6-8. We'll see some exceptions later though. The wording here is perfect. We are talking generalities. So even though I can show an example of 6-8 and 6, or 6-4 and 2, it doesn't actually negate what Caden says. So props for that wording. All right, so 1-4 doesn't really exist. The reason why is because realistically, it's hard to imagine any scenario where you can compellingly have one beat per measure or feel a groove that loops every one beat. If you try, it'll sound like a subdivided version of a more stable time signature, like something in 2, 3, or 4, for example. That doesn't mean you can't find examples of single measures of 1-4, but as far as I know, humans just cannot handle something in 1. Pieces in 1 do exist, and there's even a piece that's one beat for every two bars. I can't find a video of it, but the last time I performed Tchaikovsky's Second Symphony, the finale was conducted in one beat per two bars. <laughs> However, her statement here about feeling a groove is very accurate. My go-to example of a piece that's in one is the second movement to Beethoven 9. While this piece is in one, it's felt in four along with the hypermeter. The groove doesn't align with the time signature. To demonstrate something in 2-4, we're going to look at a song from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. One-winged angel. I would argue this is the most quintessential example of 2-4 in perhaps all of gaming. I hate to break it to you, despite a great explanation as to why, but I've actually performed One-winged angel and uh, it's in 4-4. Four, four. But how could I really encapsulate the 4-4 four, four sound in a single song? Okay, seriously, this is a perfect example of a piece in four. Because of the syncopation that happens, it locks the groove into a looping four pattern. Really solid choice in my opinion. Each measure contains an idea that perfectly fits within four beats. This kind of offbeat stuff happening in each measure helps it to compellingly feel like it's in four rather than two. The syncopation in each measure always resolves itself by the end of each four beat cycle. Oh, she says that too. I mean, I told you this video is actually pretty good. I won't play the whole section on 5-4 as Cadence shifts from an incorrect metric feel to the correct one with the tune that's playing. The main issue I have here is in her examples of other 5-4 clave pieces, and Take 5 is included. Even with 5-4, it's most often split into some funky facsimile of 4-4, with two long beats and two short beats. Here's a bunch of 5-4 examples that also do this. 
While yes, the bass of the piano does suggest this clave pattern, the melody doesn't stick with it and the typical accent for the second beat of four in the clave just isn't there, making this not a great choice. I did make a video showcasing 100 examples of this clave if you're interested. What about examples of pieces that are felt in five beats though? Sticking to Nintendo games, Metroid Other M's Lockdown Battle has a strong sense of five beats, but are grouped in three and two as Caden suggests it normally is. We naturally want to split the feel into two kinder numbers. Most often, five four is felt as three plus two, as it is here. However, in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the final Toccata has a section that doesn't have a 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3 feel, but rather just 5. Caden skips over 5-8, where we typically feel two beats to the bar, either 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. Maybe she doesn't know of a Nintendo example and just moved on? I don't know, but I actually don't know of an example either, but I do know two examples from other games, Battle for the Skies from God of War 2 and Pylon 512 from ReCore. While not technically incorrect about 6-8, I think this isn't the best example because it's slow enough to feel it in a fast 3. Seven four is asymmetrical, in this case, and most often it's felt as 2 plus 2 plus 3, with a duplet subdivision. The section on 7 4 is a closer explanation to what we would normally see for 7 8, with the 2 plus 2 plus 3 common division. And for me, I feel this particular music is actually 2 2 2 1, as the final beat seems to have the same weight as the others. For something to really feel in 7, you need something that has 7 strong beats. And that's an After the Victory from Mario Party 1. Some of you may disagree, but I think for similar stability reasons to 1-4, it's hard to make a case that 8-4, 8-8, 8-16, -8, and all further multiples actually exist. 4-4 four -four is just too stable. I'm honestly shocked about the statement about 8-8. My thoughts are, if you could feel the 5-4 clave, as Caden shows she could, then eliminating the last quarter would give you a typical 8-8 pattern. An example of that is here in Magnus' theme from Kid Icarus. I've seen this groove written in 4-4, but the implied 3-beat pattern suggests 8-8. Eight, 9-8 eight. Eight is almost always felt in 3, with a triplet subdivision, so 3 sets of 3. The title theme from Wind Waker demonstrates this perfectly. Often only the first and last eighth of each triplet is emphasized. Looking at the melody, we can see how most of the time we have this long short, long short pattern. The 9-8 example is fantastic, and there are exceptions that Cadence alludes to, like Brubeck's Blue Rondo a la Turk. But what about 9-4? While typically this would follow the same pattern as 9-8, there is an example of a piece with a groove that's in 4-4, but every other bar has an extra beat. 
That's in Sly Cooper, the gumbo graveyard enemy encounter. Four could very easily be felt as two measures of 5-4 added together, but all of the elements loop every 10 beats, and the 5-beat split doesn't feel as convincing as it usually does in 5-4 bangers. Oh, I couldn't agree more with her section on 10-4. I've seen this piece transcribed as 5-4, but the 10-beat loop is just too strong. Kudos. <laughs> Interestingly, when I first heard this piece from Mario Odyssey, I thought it had the same division as the Mario Kart example. If you isolate the backing percussion, you get that 2-2-3-2-2 groove, but the upper voices follow a different pattern as Caden showed. I think the best example to feel that 5B groove is by switching over to Sony with the Zeldrin Spaceport from Ratchet & Clank 3. Twelve eight is very friendly, and perhaps the last friendly time signature we're going to see today. Definitely what makes 12-8 so nice is the clean divisibility. As mentioned earlier, almost always, and in this song, 12-8 is felt in 4, with triplet subdivision. This example of 12-8 is great and all, but since we are getting into higher numbers, different divisions can crop up. And I've got one here from a Nintendo property. Big Boss from Yoshi's Island DS has a cool groove of 2-2-3-2-3, or trading off our typical 7-8 and 5-8 progressions. <laughs> We have another prime number time signature. This time we're looking at the shrine battle theme from Breath of the Wild. <laughs> After that short intro in 4-4, we're immediately thrust into 13-8 land. It took me 10 billion years to transcribe this, because this is our first example that doesn't feel like a groove, nor is it intuitive in any way. Ooh, alright Cadence, that's impressive to be able to transcribe that Zelda example. But an easier groove to hear is the Weapon Factory from Super Mario RPG, where the groove feels like it's trading off 7-8 and 3-4, but that still equals 13-8. There are few other tunes that capture the vibe of Pure 14 as well as this one from A Link Between Worlds. That groove is certainly the best of 14-8 or 14-16 time signature. I mean, it could be either, it just depends on preference. But to throw an example out myself, Star Fox's Space Battleground has a section that has a 3-3-2-8-8 bar followed by a typical 3-4 bar looping pattern, making for another 14-8 example. <laughs> exist for the same reason as 8. Whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> I have an example with different divisions. First, there is this groove from the running theme in Punch-Out that has a 6-beat feel. Yes, the trumpet melody is in 4-4, four, four, but the groove itself is in 16-8. This is a very common groove to put under 4-4, and it's in Xenoblade Chronicles as well in the Time to Fight music. A better example of 16-8 though is if we remove the melody from Smash Melee.
And that's just the how to play music, giving us a 9-8 followed by a 7-8 pattern. All right, guys, so I looked and I looked and I looked and I swear I could not find anything even close to any time sigs between 17 and 20 in a Nintendo game. Yeah, me neither. At least not video game music. But Kid and Skip's 22. Okay, it's not a Nintendo property. I mean, it used to be until 7. But Final Fantasy XIII's Lightning Returns has the 788878 pattern in the boss music entitled Chaos. <laughs> final example and the highest upper number I could find, Fishing Frenzy from Splatoon 2 Salmon Run Mode. 31 is pretty high, but what if I told you I could double it? That's right, 62 AND from a Nintendo property. Fight 1 from Fire Emblem Gaiden has an insanely cool looping sequence that adds up to 62. Of the many videos I've seen about time signatures, this one is the closest I've seen in explanations of meter, but just barely off. Definitely give the video a watch, well worth it for some great examples and explanations. <laughs> 